Hey, what's up guys, Ira here, and welcome back to my F1 Road to Glory series for 2019 here for the Japanese Grand Prix in Season 2. Last time out, we did the impossible, the unthinkable with a Williams car, and we went on to get a second win for the season. I can feel the speed coming already. Speed! The speed! And it's going to catapult us towards turn two. Down the inside we go. Big break zone there. Just about to somehow slow down the car. And we're up into P1. Quite remarkable, really. I still can't really comprehend how we've managed to finesse our way to two wins in the last three. That is a sentence I never thought I'd be saying in this car. Um, but, you know, stranger things have happened, I guess, in this series. We've had the 11 DNF races. We've had Kibitza beating me at some point in the season. So I guess anything is possible, really. And it's good news on the car front here because we also have a brand new upgrade on the chassis front to come to our car. Although, I've got to say, if you look close enough what the upgrade is, it's a tyre upgrade, um, but the specific component of that is tyre blankets. Tyre blankets. How is that a real upgrade? Is this upgrade basically the team admitting this entire time since season one, we haven't actually owned tire blankets of any kind? Like, apparently every single team up and down the pit lane use tire blankets to you know, warm the tires up, make sure that they're not absolutely brick cold like they are in F2 and F3 when you go out the pit lane. But apparently we have only just discovered this technology of tire blanket. I mean, knowing Williams, it's probably not the same technology actually. You know, the, the, the tire blankets other teams use are proper engineered, you know, manufactured fibers, you know, with a kind of silver lining and whatnot to, you know, preserve the heat, you know, pump some heat into them. Our tire blankets are literally probably just blankets that the engineers have got from their home. But cool, nice to know that our team's not trying to hide away from how B-Tech we are in terms of the way we do things. We've only just got this super, super modern technology on the car. Great stuff. Uh, but my rather perplexed and good mood is going to be ruined at the start of this episode because it is going to be raining in qualifying there. Um, so, as always, our car is pretty horrendous horrendous in the wet and at Japan you know sector one sector two even sector three to be honest because you've got the spoon curves it, there's so many corners to just get wrong anyway in the dry let alone in the wet in this car so I, I don't hold up much hope for this uh, for this qualifying session but you know we are race winners double race winners we are the reigning race winner that there's not a thing in F1 that anyone says but I'm gonna say it anyway we are the reigning race winners of Formula One right now coming into this race weekend so let's put on a show and show them uh, show them why so as you can see it is rather soaking here at the Suzuka circuit we're up into P7 climbing even more on the top left there P5 P4 P2 P1 such is the power of our engine and then in one foul swoop into turn one we're going to probably lose most of these positions if we go on the exit there down to p10 we did momentarily actually keep p1 mid apex but then as we go through the left and right you can just see how slow the car is down to p16 on the back straight through 130 are maintaining the kind of p16 position there having to lift off quite a fair bit through 130 up we actually gained some time there p14 obviously the engine coming in clutch once more but then we've got the last two corners and then the last corner i mean it's a nightmare anyway in other career modes let alone the road to glory career mode in this Williams car and so we go down to P17 a massive wobble and across the line it will be P17 it's pretty disappointing I can't lie it's a bit disappointing but we just need to push hard in the race and we can still come away with something yep so how far the mighty fall uh, from winning the the last race at Russia to now oh no oh my it's happened again I've qualified slower than Robert Kibit. This is a nut. Oh, my. I think my career might be over again. I don't know how he's managed it because that car felt horrendous in Sector 1, in Sector 2, and actually in Sector 3, like I, like I mentioned before, like it was going to. I don't know how Robert Kibit has pulled that out. Um, he's two tens ahead of us. So, for the second time only in the entire history of us being teammates, I think, he has outqualified me. Um, fair play. Fair play. I mean, I can't say much. That's, uh, that's rather worrying. Hopefully, tomorrow is a better today. It should be a much better day though because here we are on Sunday. Sunny skies are about and we have come back from I guess worse before. I mean taking case in point the Singapore Grand Prix and that ended up a pretty damn awesome one. Sector 1 could be a bit of carnage with the cars getting so close in terms of DNF so let's all pray a little bit for that and uh, keep positive. Five races remaining and you've still got a chance of winning the world driver's title. Let's grab a solid points finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
Oh, oh man. <laughs> okay, okay. When uh, I said keep positive, I didn't quite mean like that. I don't know where on earth Jeff has pulled that out of his ass in terms of, yes, we are definitely in the championship. But mathematically, maybe so, Jeff. But you, of all people, the man who's been so pessimistic this entire season, how on earth have you just said that to me? That we've got five races left. Oh, yeah, we're, we're in the championship. Well, keep going. I don't understand this man. Jeff and Claire have definitely smoked some stuff over the course of this season. But I think today, before this GP began, he's just hit the, the fattest one ever. Because I don't know where on earth he came out with that, 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 that statement. Here we go then, anyway, though, to this race, which is apparently a race to keep us in the championship. Uh, it's going to be a one-stop, of course. Soft tire to the mediums. And as usual, we'll uh, try and use a decent amount of fuel. But also, at the same time, overheating will be an issue. Uh, sector 1, lap 1 is going to be very interesting. We're going to have to try and survive that. I think it's going to be a bit of a case of maybe having a little bit of patience and getting some moves done rather than lap 2 rather than lap 1. But of course, we'll, we'll try and see what we can do here. But from P17 here behind Robert Kovitz, uh, the only way is is really up. Um, un unless we went down, of course, to the three positions that are left there. But t technically, we, we, we can only go up. So here we go then towards five red lights for the Japanese Grand Prix. A big fight back today, apparently, for the championship fight for us and the Drivers' Championship. Here we go then to five red lights and we're underway here at Suzuka and it's a great start for us compared to Robert Kubica really bogs down and so we could maybe get him into turn one but Roman Grosjean very awkwardly places his car get brake checked by Kubica as well and so into turn one rather, rather than gaining one position I actually lose one to Kvyat there because we actually had him already and we have to re-overtake him now into the left hand to get a tire on the grass very fine margins on the right hand side but we managed to survive that and so we're in P16 but Robert Kubica is still ahead of us here so it's it's a it's a damn miracle it really is a miracle that he's somehow stayed ahead of us now, but now is the time to get the job done. Look at the exit we got there, and we strap up the engine up into overtake mode. Rich Meeks going down the inside we go, and we're going to force Kibitza wide. He's going to have to give out, and so we're finally up the position there, and our career is no longer over, I guess, in Williams. And now we chase after Grosjean, the man who blocked us off into turn one from making the initial move, and we actually sent down the inside. Not only him, but also Pierre Gasly caught napping a little bit there in the hairpin. A little flick of oversteer actually helps us out there. Just try and push him away, and so we're up into P13. It's been a very aggressive lap one after initially te being tentative into turn one, actually. So decent stuff there. And we're actually now catching up to Leclerc in the Ferrari. I don't know what on earth is going with him or even both Ferraris. Because they're actually both just ahead of me. I can see Vettel also only two cars ahead. So I'm not sure what on earth is going on with the Italian outfit. But uh, obviously we embarrassed them at the Italian Grand Prix. And now we can probably try and embarrass them once more uh, here at the Japanese Grand Prix once again. As uh, he does get the move done, Leclerc. And overtakes the hat of Dan Ricciardo as we're now close up to Australia and through the last few turns you can see it this last corner is probably going to cause us issues all race long and then we actually move on all the way to the next lap the same part of the circuit and we're still starting at the back of Ricardo here so a little bit annoying now we've kind of hit a bit of a roadblock in terms of our progress I'm hoping this is not where the max position we can hope for in this race is going to be as Gasly tries to re-overtake us here so we're actually being really hounded at that last corner but oh there's a massive oh massive collision there for Sebastian Vettel airborne nearly flipped over things sideways into the wall. Also, another Haas, I think, was, uh, was out there. I think it was Hulkenberg. But let's have a look at a replay then. This was nearly a three-wide moment. I think that it's between Vettel, the Mercedes, and the Haas of Hulkenberg. And look at that in the distance there. Flipped over. Let's look on board. So, Albon goes for the move on the left. Vettel on the right. And it's a massive thump on the front left there. And then the way he was uh, in the gravel uh, makes his car nearly go completely up, upside down. Even if the wall wasn't there, I think he would have gone fully upside down and hung like a cow, basically, there. But uh, uh, insane, insane action already at Suzuka. So, that's what we were hoping for in Sector 1. Something like that would happen. And so, there we go. Two DNFs like that, two free positions, and already we're cashing in on others' myth fortunes, and that is exactly what we do here at Williams. It's on the it's on the company motto, for goodness sake, on the third line. But we're now focusing back on Dan Ricardo. We're P11 then, so we've got a chance to finally get into some points made positions if we can get Ricardo. And uh, so far, we haven't really had the speed in straight line, but that's because the engine has been overheating quite a fair bit on rich mix. So you can see here, that's why right now I'm actually in lean mixture. We now finally go to standard, and we'll be able to wind this back up to rich on the back straight to get some speed in there. So. Uh, definitely uh, hampering me a little bit, not looking off that as much as I should have in the opening two, three laps here. But here we go now. Overtake mode on the ERS. Rich Mix going and the engine is not overheating this time. So we're gaining on Ricardo now. Finally into 130. I'm going to have to lift off here. Not just to give him room, but also the fact that Williams just doesn't feel, I don't have the confidence of going flat out quite yet in this car. I mean, the, the speed will be there in a straight line. But the, as you guys know from last episode, the aero non-existent. We still have so many error upgrades to do in. So 130R is definitely not a confident flat out corner for us as a team quite yet. But Ricardo comes back through again that last corner 
proving difficult for us. We go very defensive there from the right to left and block him off there and remain in P10. And second sector then, as we go on to lap number five, very decent, purple second and third sector. So finally, finding our groove maybe at Suzuka and building up some speed as it's side by side between the other Ferrari. And oh, there's another car off there. It's uh, uh, Tor Rosso, I think that was, as we got Raikkonen out of the Grand Prix. It's it. So I don't know if that was uh, Raikkonen in the Tor Rosso. Last time I checked, he was still in the Alfa Romeo in this series, I think. But a uh, uh, car off nonetheless. And so we're up into P9 there. But that was uh, Leclerc and Albon going side by side into turn one. Leclerc overtook Albon. Albon now comes back at Leclerc to get it down the inside of 130R. So brilliant racing between these two youngsters in the Mercedes and, uh, and Ferrari car. We've set another purple second sector to really close up to Leclerc uh, quite a fair bit here. So these guys squabbling and me actually finding some pace now is uh, proving really decent right now. So if we're lucky, maybe we could just snag P7 if these two want to battle some more and I can catch them both lapping. I'm confident we have the speed uh, for a 130R move to potentially. But here goes Leclerc down the inside. Oh, it's another massive collision there between two cars. Sparks fly, Leclerc sideways and Albin is still going somehow. I think he's got major damage to the front wing though. So we should be able to get him here. But we're up into P7 already because I believe there's also another car off there. So two free positions. Could we get a third here by an overtake on track? Albin still going and somehow he's actually looking pretty okay. Even though I'm pretty sure he sustained a massive amount of front wing damage here. Uh, but that just shows how bad the arrow is at Williams. That, I, I joke about our front wing being a plank of wood a lot. But literally, Albert, I think, at this point has a plank of carbon fiber as a front wing as he collected uh, Leclerc. Yeah, you can see there, he's got no cascade elements whatsoever. It may as well just be a plank of carbon fiber there. And somehow he actually had enough downforce to keep up with me and actually stay ahead of me in sector one. We get the job done eventually, though, into the hairpin. But uh, just kind of shows how much we've got to maybe close up on the top teams in terms of our aero. Chassis-wise, we're looking pretty good. Obviously, engine, we're the best there. That's the only thing we can kind of brag about there. But uh, another massive bit of action into tur turn one. It's Brutal. I thought the action would be in the S section, but just turn one alone is proving to be the real danger zone for most of these cars here. So lap number six, up into P6. Happy days, really. The next car along is Sergio Perez. I don't believe we'll be able to catch him up, maybe. He's in the fight, though, with, I think it looks like McLaren and the other Mercedes and Hamilton, so you never know. So I believe Lando Norris, I think, is out of the Grand Prix, because I think his uh, indicator came up to say he DNF. So I think Carlos Sainz then is still the one flying the flag from McLaren, of course, our main rivals in this championship. But yellow flags out again and there's another car out Valtteri Bottas out of the Grand Prix six DNFs then at turn one all of it at turn one bloody ridiculous I'm sure the FI are gonna have to look into that but Valtteri Bottas out and so we're up into P5 from P17 I would have definitely taken that if you told me at the beginning. Let's have a look then at what happened with Leclerc and Albon. Leclerc sends it down the inside, much like Sebastian Vettel, actually a copycat move. And you can see there, he actually is in sync with the McLaren of Lando Norris, who is already out of this GP. This was actually ahead of them. He got knocked out by his fellow Brit Hamilton the on the front right tyre. And uh, uh, basically Leclerc joined him. And then this was Sainz round the outside of Valtteri Bottas there. So annoyingly, he's the one that uh, actually caused the incident for Bottas there. And he did not get caught up in it. But all three of them, pretty much the same piece of, of the track of the gravel trap pretty much uh, so I'm sure the marshal there was having an absolute field day in terms of just waiting for another car every lap to DNF there so like I said with that we're, we were up into P5 we're not actually P3 right now so, uh, some uh, others have already made their pit stop on lap number 7 we're going to come in now on lap number 8 my engineer did want me to come in on lap number 9 but I think we'd rather just come in here cover, uh, cover off our cars behind us basically on the medium tires not risk it and you can see uh, as we come down the pit lane it's a pretty empty pit lane for us of course so no kind of uh, you know issues with us getting held up but unfortunately that man right up there, Carlos Sainz. We won't be able to get him. So McLaren probably will outscore us a decent amount here this race because I think he's in a podium position, actually, as Kibitz is in now. But uh, obviously, we had a massive amount of points over him after the two wins we got. So, yeah, that's why that, that result was so good. Cushion the blow if McLaren do get us at races like this. But uh, I say that, to be fair, we've limited the damage quite a fair bit to what it could have been if we didn't get up all these positions and Carlos Sainz remained in a podium position. And you're probably thinking now, right, strapped on a new set of tyres. Brands back in the new mediums here full send we've got some fuel to use got ERS there's gonna be a huge amount of action coming up in the next four laps well I'm here to tell you you are severely wrong it was uh it was a snooze I'm, I'm lucky I didn't fall asleep at the wheel it's here we are then on the last lap of the Grand Prix and uh, we're still P5 that was a rather anticlimactic ending to what was a rather exciting Grand Prix for about six laps I guess we kind of blew the load a little bit earlier not to I mean, that was the wrong why did I say that phrase now the video's gonna get demonetized anyway we move through to the last corner there 
there, and we're coming up into P5 of the Japanese Grand Prix. It's a stellar effort from P17. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part four, mate. And Jeff could not give a flying toss. To be fair to him, though, he's probably all conked out from giving me compliments because obviously he had to compliment me for the win last race, so that was enough for him. So even this great comeback right now, nah, nah, he's, he's, he's filled his quota for compliments for the, probably the entire series now. Work out there today. Let's have your thoughts. Did you struggle to get through all that traffic today? No, it wasn't a, it wasn't an issue at all getting through that traffic. You know, we've said it before, the, the car had a grace of a ballet dancer. We clearly showed that in quali when it was, you know, what, tail happy and basically going sideways in the way. Definitely a ballet dancer of sorts, you got to say. We all underestimated you, didn't we? Yeah, Claire, Claire, you and the paddock did underestimate us. Obviously, two wins in the last three. Great comeback here, but everyone's allowed mistakes because I know, I know we at Williams allow mistakes. Our engineers constantly are making mistakes. Have you seen the amount of uh, part failures we've had this series? Absolutely. Absolute joke. Do you think your rival learned from his battle with you? I think Robert Kubitz has learned that um, even if he does out-qualify me, he's never going to win the teammate battle. And uh, that one time you asked me if I could learn something from him, um, I think we're still all laughing at that. Great. Well, that's everything. Right, so there we have it then. Max Verstappen wins the Grand Prix. Science and Forty. Look at that. P2 in the McLaren. So it means it's over the Drivers' Championship. We stay in P4. We're now level on points with Sebastian Vettel. So we could actually beat both Ferraris in the Drivers' Championship, which would be thoroughly, thoroughly embarrassing for the largest team in Formula 1. The scooter here would be absolute calamities for them. Imagine being beaten by a toiletry on wheels. But uh, in the championship constructors wise, P4 still sol solidly there. We're nowhere near Red Bull there. Obviously the consistency and the lack of points from Robert Kubica hurt us quite a, bit, a fair bit. But we're still uh, well ahead of McLaren. So that shouldn't be an issue. I'm not too scared about that. You know, four races left. Yes, we might have some difficult ones at USA and Brazil. But I think Mexico could be a great one for us. So actually we probably could outscore McLaren again at the Mexican Grand Prix if the upgrades come through and the car is looking decent uh, at least somewhat decent through the corners there. But we go through to the end of the episode, and I know this is going to be very shocking to all of you. This is a big, big shock. This is unheard of in the Road to Glory series in Season 2 particularly, but we're actually going to purchase an air upgrade. I know, I know. Absolute madness. But I thought, you know what? It, it's time. It's time. We've got so many engine upgrades on the car, and I, I fancy actually having a bit of a front end when we get to USA. So here's hoping the team don't muck it up. They haven't done an air upgrade since Season 1. Like, we have not done a single air upgrade this entire season. Just deep that. So I hope they've not forgotten how to make aerodynamics. I wouldn't blame them if they did. They are the kind of guys that would forget that. They haven't practiced it in a while, but let's hope they don't. And we have the upgrade come in for USA. That'll definitely be of big use in Sector 1. But that has been this episode at the Japanese Grand Prix. All in all, very, very decent episode for us. Great race for us. Actually, some decent points. Obviously, lost some points to science, but damage limit limited as much as we could there. And uh, some fantastic crashing, which is always uh, an entertainment to watch, really, from, from my steering wheel. So, guys, if you did enjoy the episode, be sure to hit that like button. Let me know your thought in the comments below. If you're on your own, tier, for weekly full-on content. I've been Arifa. Have a good day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.